is the stock market setting a trap and let's not forget in the month of july the nasdaq has peaked more times than any other month in history and we're right now in a very bullish period of time as this stat suggests so the question is should we be concerned today it seems like every day the stock market continues to make new all-time highs the queues yesterday making new all-time highs and after hours the nasdaq was making new all-time highs along with the s p 500 also making new all-time highs however when we come and look at some of the recent high flyers like tesla right now in pre-market tesla is down two dollars and 22 cents and let's not forget if we start to see some weakness out here in the market tesla has a few gaps below us that need to come back and get filled now we keep seeing a lot of warning signs out here like this the triple whammy threat is building for the u.s stock investors and keep in mind with all these warning signs it doesn't indicate that today is going to be the day that we start to see that pull back but essentially what this goes on to say is the number one threat is irrational hopes and expectations trump rationality in times like this and keep in mind greed is not always good like like gordon gecko said in the movie wall street they also warned of the impact of the new normality of interest rates around five percent remember earlier this year they were expecting interest rate cuts six seven times this year and now the first one is being priced in out here in september and then again we have the final concern which would be the u.s election is biden going to stay in the race or is it going to drop out let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below so during the live streams and some of the analysis videos we've been keeping an eye on the kre the regional banking ETF. We look at what, what this article right here says, are 70% discounts on office buildings enough? Billionaire investor Howard Marks isn't sure that is gonna be the case. What this article goes on to say is, office buildings that have been selling at a steep discount in New York and other big cities don't necessarily guarantee a win for the owner. And guess what else? If these buildings are going on a huge discount sale, who is gonna be penalized and what if just what if there ends up being no buyers for those huge office buildings what do you think is going to happen to the regional banking e what do you think is going to happen to kre the regional banking etf it's going going to come under pressure you might say mike that's just an etf yes but what's inside the etf it's all about the banks now on a little bit of a good news banking woes and commercial real estate could ease with rate cuts says moody and we all know the fed is going to come to the rescue However, is it gonna to be too late? Because I wanna remind you guys of this chart right here. Anytime the Fed has went on an aggressive rate cutting campaign, look at the drops that we've had in the stock market. Anywhere from 27% drop, all the way as high as 58% drop in the stock market. So we need to be careful what we actually wish for. Remember, the Fed does not cut out the goodness of their heart. The only way the Fed is gonna start cutting rates is because they know something is already broken in the economy so far for the month of july we keep seeing that nasdaq and sp make new all-time highs is this gonna be another case where july is actually the month that the nasdaq peaks out and keep in mind for the remainder of this week we still have a very bullish stat so even if we do start to get a pullback even if today is a small itty bitty little trap now we can see when the trailing quarter april 8th through july 8th is up at least five percent we can see that actually bodes well for the period that we're in right now between July 8th and the 15th. And you can see with the S&P 500, out of, out of 19 occurrences, 17 have been up. And with the NASDAQ, we can see out of the last 24 occurrences, 22 have been up and only two down. So this actually favors that this week is indeed gonna be bullish even as we do have a lot of even as we do have a lot of economic threats like today j powell speaking at 10 a.m and then yellen's going to be yelling as well we also have a fomc members speaking at 1 30. then tomorrow j powell's going to be taking the podium again i want to remind you guys all right when j powell testifies back to back normally one of those days are bullish one of the days are bearish so is today going to be the bullish day or is today going to be the bearish day wednesday we also have the 10-year bond auction but let's not forget about thursday thursday is going to be the cpi data is it gonna show that inflation is indeed starting to cool or are we gonna find out that inflation is a lot stickier? We come over and look at the fear and greed index. We're sitting at 53 right now. We are stuck in neutral territory as the stock market continues to make new all-time highs. What is causing so much fear in the market that the fear and greed index cannot get back over into greedy territory as the stock market continues to climb the new highs. Now we look at Nvidia this morning, it's up $2.01. We come over and look at Microsoft. Microsoft in pre-market is up a dollar and five cents. 
We come over and look at Google this morning, up 42 cents on the session, but I want you guys to pay very close attention. Google yesterday, basically an inside day, meaning the high was lower than the high from the prior day. The low was higher than the low from the prior day. So the, the whole range from yesterday was contained within Friday's range. The same thing can be said when we come over and look at Microsoft. Yesterday's range was completely contained within Friday's range. And then as we come over and look at the NASDAQ itself, we saw we were making new all-time highs. MACD, we still have divergence, but when we look over here on the 30-minute chart, what, what do we see? Well, we essentially have a D as in dog-shaped profile. Now, the reason why this is important is with a D-shaped profile, we're likely to get a breakout or breakdown from this pattern. A lot of times, the first move is nothing more than a false move. Right now in pre-market, we see the Qs are where? Trading up $1.62 up here at new all-time highs. However, is this going to be a trap? Is this the first push? only to come down lower and possibly come down to our first zone at about 495 or so, which is a minus development area within the profile out here from Friday, or are we gonna have a much deeper retracement? The MACD indicator continues to grind a little bit lower while price continues to go higher and higher by the day. I wanna make everybody aware, Apex 7 a massive 80% sale off all their valuation accounts, passing as little as one day, and you can also get a 150K account for only $40. You get a 250K account for only $40, and you get a 300K account for only $40. So if you want to take advantage of this offer, use the link in the description box down below and use the promo code Mike at checkout. Then as we come over and look at the futures markets, we can see ever since this low right over here, it's just been a steady march on the way up. We can see last week we had a range of 827 points, and we add on, we tack on another 169 points of range so far from this week. At some point, we should start to get a pullback. And one of the key areas I do want to watch is going to be this high volume node on the composite profile, which comes in about 20,625. Yes, I know that's over 100 points away from where we're currently at. But if we pull our Fibonacci retracement, measure from the low all the way up to the high, a 38% retracement would be what is considered a normal retracement. And look at where that comes in slightly above the weekly untested value area high at 20,340. I still think sometime this week or next week, we are going to test 20,340. And in my book, the only question is not if, but is it gonna be this week or is it gonna be next week? As this week, we do have a lot of economic news. Now, last night we have this pattern where we can see that we close well above value area high. Have we come down and tested it yet? The answer is no. So what am I looking for this morning? Well, if we start violating the volume profile levels from the overnight session, this is going to be one of my runner targets along with the point of control down here at 20,636. Now, as we look at the dollar index out here so far this morning, we see the dollar index is up nine cents on the session. So is this going to be a case where we have a higher low and we're now going to make another charge up here towards this resistance level? If we take a look at the VIX in pre-market. The VIX is up 11 cents while the market is out here making new all-time highs. And we look at the SPY, and yesterday the SPY was basically a doji candle. Now, a doji candle is nothing more than a candle of indecision. And the fact that we have already been breaking out to the top side, we need to be a little bit concerned with that today. We look out here on the volume profile, and what do we see? We had a D as in dog shape profile. Now, we've already violated all the way above all-time highs, and the question is, are we gonna start to come lower? Is this nothing more than a trap? Now, if you're really, really aggressive, if we start getting back below the high from yesterday, then we can look to target value area high at 555.54, which is value area high from yesterday. The point of control, 555.19, and value area low would be 554.77. Anything below that price point, we gotta ask ourselves, all right, where would be the likely area the market would try to retrace down towards? We can simply grab a Fibonacci retracement from the swing low, all the way up here to the swing high and notice the 38% retracement is right near where we had a minor swing point in the market that we have broken out from that we still have not come back to repair just yet. And that brings us down to about 551.04. If we start seeing headlines about Biden stepping down or something like that, we could quickly flush to the downside. However, Biden continues to vow that he is not going anywhere. Now, if that's gonna be the case, that's more stable for the markets. So we'll have to wait and see how that news develops. Now, if we look over here on the composite profile, we have this distribution area on the profile, but if things really start to get ugly, I really wanna pay attention down here towards somewhere around 55.91. And let's not forget, we still have the untested value area high from last week at 55.78.50. That to me is gonna be a point of interest sometime this week or sometime next week. 
Then as we come over and look at the daily profiles, keep in mind, this is an area that we marked off, I think in last night's video or during the live stream. And where do we come right up to? We came right back up towards that zone. And now what have we done? We have nothing more than upper level consolidation. Are they gonna run it one more time, setting the trap? And then we're gonna start coming down, maybe hitting the point of control down here at 56.25. I think if indeed we're gonna have a sell off in the markets today, I think it's gonna be induced by Jay Powell. However, regardless of what Jay Powell does or does not say, it's gonna be critical. Where are we trading in relations to the overnight volume profile levels? You can see overnight, we had a nice push up and then just to consolidate all night long. Now, when we come over and look at the volume profile levels, keep in mind, if we start breaking below value area low, I'm gonna to wanna to target the untest, I'm gonna to wanna to target value area high from yesterday and then even down here towards the untested point of control. Or if we can break above the overnight value area high, then we start coming back down, we can target the point of control, value area low, and then all the way down here towards some of these lower targets on the daily profiles and also on the composite profile as well. Now, let's come over and take a look at the overnight volume profile levels real quick. And like we said earlier, nothing more than upper level consolidation, but right now in pre-market, we're actually trading just below value area low. Are we gonna get another rotation up before ultimately coming down, trying to test that untested value area high? or even the untested point of control. Now, value area low is gonna be up here at 20,718. The point of control will be 20,733.50, and value area high is gonna be 20,743.50. So how do I wanna play this? Well, one, if we start trading above the overnight value area low, then I wanna target the point of control. I wanna target and see, can we make another run towards value area high? Then, as long as we stay above that price point, I'd wanna keep looking for buying opportunities. However, if we start to come back down below that area, I wanna play the rotation on the way down, or if we're below value area low, I wanna look for lower prices. And keep in mind, some of the runner targets I have in mind are gonna be value area high from yesterday, along with the untested point of control from yesterday. As we come over and look at the S&P 500, we have value area high coming at 56.39.00. The point of control will come in at 56.38.00, and value area low will come in at 56.35.00. Now, right now, we are currently trading right near value area low. If we start getting back above that price point, then I wanna look to target the point of control, value area high, and if we get above value area high, as long as we stay above it, I wanna keep holding on for higher prices. If we come back down below value area, value area high, I then wanna play the point of control, value area low as, a, as another target, then anything below value area low, I wanna refer back over here to the daily profiles, and more importantly, down here towards 56.25.50, anything below that price point. That's when I'm gonna start looking over here on the composite profile to see if we can start making our way back down towards some of these high volume areas on the composite profile. Now, if you guys wanna learn how I use Bookmap to find high probability trades, watch this video right here.